So let us look at diseases that are caused by protozoa. So protozoa is also uh, 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 some diseases can be categorized as diseases caused by protozoa. So let us look at some of these diseases. We have a uh, number one, malaria. Malaria is one of the diseases that is caused by protozoa. Cause. <clears throat> So malaria is caused by a parasite caused, called plasmodium. So plasmodium is a parasite that causes malaria. Effects and areas, which areas are affected by the, uh, the parasite, the plasmodium. Generally, the, the parasite, which is plasmodium, affects the blood circulatory system. In, in particular, it affects the red blood what, cells. So plasmodium is a parasite that reduces the number of red blood cells in our bodies. So, so we are saying the parasite multiplies in the river, so it can multiply in the river. It then breaks out of river cells to multiply further. It's merozoids in red blood cells, causing them to burst. So once they multiply in uh, red blood cells, the red blood cells can uh, uh, burst. So toxins from plasmodium and the damaged red blood cells cause symptoms of what? Malaria. So this parasite, because it's a living thing, it excretes, it removes some toxins from its body. So those, these toxins go into the blood uh, stream, which can cause what? Uh, damage. It can cause symptoms of the malaria. So the symptoms of malaria is a, a result of the um, toxins. The toxins... These are all the poisons that are excreted by the uh, parasite, plasmodia. So a more severe and fatal malaria will result, result if plasmodium enters the brain cell. So we are saying a fatal malaria will result in plasmodium entering the brain cell. So generally when the bacteria, the plasmodium, sorry, reaches the brain cells, it can be fatal, it can cause what? Uh, death. So we are saying the uh, causes, this causes the cerebral malaria. So at times from the liver, it can spread further from the blood secretory system. The plasmodium can spread to the brain where it can cause cerebral malaria, which at times can claim uh, lives of people. Mode of transmission. Now let us look at how malaria is spread from one person to another. Number one, it is transmitted through plasmodium in the blood of an infected person. So the plasmodium can transmit the, uh, disease, the disease. It is transmitted into humans by a vector. So a vector is any, a, a, any organism that carries microorganisms or pathogens that cause what? Diseases. So the female Anopheles mosquito is the one that actually uh, carries the microorganisms. So plasmodium is injected into a healthy person through saliva that is used to prevent blood clotting. So the uh, plasmodium is injected into uh, a healthy person through saliva. So you know when the mosquito bites, it injects it together with saliva. So those saliva, they have anticoagulants. So these anticoagulants, they help to prevent blood what? clotting so that the blood does not clot when it is exposed to air. That's what the mosquito does. Let us look at symptoms of malaria. A patient feels kills, chills, chilling, that feels some sort of coldness. There is fever, shivering, sweating at night, a patient feels a headache, pain of the head, head. In some cases, there is a vomiting. So in some cases, when a person is affected by malaria, it develops nausea and 
vomiting. There is loss of appetite to food. A person will have that will have no appetite towards the food that is given. Even if one can fly meat, still more you find that uh, that person has no appetite. There's muscle aches, there are muscle pains, general feeling of uh, weakness, general feeling of weakness of the body, so the body becomes very weak. Now, let us look at how we can prevent and control malaria. Therefore, prevention and control of malaria. So, we are saying malaria can be prevented by killing mosquitoes through uh, draining swamps or stagnant water in cans. These could be bottles, broken pots, holes, leaf surface to prevent egg laying mosquitoes. Now, because these swamps or the, uh, uh, the pots are the sites for breeding, we need to drain all the stagnant water. Stagnant water, we mean the water that is not flowing, the water that is not moving. That's what it means. Spraying or pouring oil on stagnant water that cannot be drained. Oil block the spiracles of pupa and reduced oxygen entry. So uh, when we spray oil on the surface of uh, water, what general does that uh, the pupa uses oxygen to respire. So when we pour, pour oil, that oil is going to deprive oxygen. Um, therefore, the, 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 plasma, the lava cannot survive. In the ten, we are disturbing the life cycle of the uh, mosquito, hence preventing malaria. So oil will, will remove oxygen, will prevent entry of oxygen in water, so much so that the lava cannot even use that oxygen. And in the long run, it dies. Introducing fish which eat mosquito lava into ponds or lakes, you know, uh, one, most of the times when you have ponds, that's, those areas are affected by malaria. They are malaria prone zones. So now, keeping fish, the fish will eat the lava of what? Lava of the mosquitoes. By so doing, the life cycle of mosquito is compromised, is broken. So therefore, that leads to prevention of malaria. For example, we have gambusia. So gambusia is the, the, the fish species that feed on what? Mosquito larvas. So sleeping under treated nets, the nets must be uh, used. Don't use nets for other things, for gardening, for what purposes, but you have to use them for treating, uh, for uh, preventing mosquito bites, especially at night. Treating people with anti-malarial drugs, so you can treat those people affected by malaria. When we have a treatment, it means the disease has already affected you. So now you are using drugs. So you can use fancy dye, you can use, uh, uh, um, you can use several drugs for malaria. We have RA, we have whatsoever. Number two, another disease caused by protozoa, we have sleeping sickness sleeping sickness so this one is caused by protozoa the name of that protozoa is trypanosom rhodensians that's the name of the uh, protozoa trypanosom rhodensians effects and areas sleeping sickness generally the protozoa attacks both people and wild what animals how is it transmitted? Mode of spread. The protozoa are transmitted by tsetse flies through bites. So some areas, especially the areas that are covered with sun, they are, uh, inf are infected. They are affected by uh, tsetse flies. What are the symptoms of sleeping, uh, sleeping sickness? These are, one, dryness during the day. A person feels to, to like sleeping. Fever and headaches feels the pain in the head. Lack of sleep at night. So generally lack sleeps, sleeping. The, uh, lack of sleep at night. Generally these people, 
they will stay awake, they will stay alert most of the times. Anxiety and mood changes. Here should be mood. Uncontrollable sleep, sleepiness during the day. So a person can be sleeping now and again. That becomes uncontrollable. Sweating. Swollen leaf. Swollen leaf. Prevention and control. How can we prevent and control sleeping sickness? Use of drugs to treat infected people. So we can use the drugs. Set a fly control. So set a fly can be controlled by bush clearing. We have to clear the bush around our homes. When the, 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 the houses are surrounded by a lot of glass, you have to slash them to clear the bush. Trapping can trap those SSA flies. Use of pesticides, developing corridors between forests and areas where people live. So the corridors can be developed, releasing sterile males. Diseases caused by parasitic worms. So we have other diseases that are caused by parasitic worms. Number one, we have elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is caused by Wuchereria banculophyte. So this is the filiorial worm that we are talking about, Wuchereria banculophyte. So this one, um, Wuchereria banculophyte is a, a parasite which actually affects uh, even human beings. So effects and areas, which areas are affected by Wuchereria banculophyte? So we are saying it is a disorder of lymphatic system. So it affects the lymphatic what? system. So the filarial worm parasite attacks and lives in the secretory and lymphatic system of the host. So basically it affects the lymphatic system. You talk of the lymph nodes, the lymph vessels. So the worms block the lymphatic vessels. So it can affect the lymphatic vessels. If they are blocked, then it uh, what happens, this causes the tissue fluid to accumulate and fail to drain, leading to swelling of the affected area. So what happens is that when the, uh, uh, the, the, the lymph vessels are blocked, tissue fluid starts to accumulate and that, fails, uh, that failure of tissue fluid to be drained into the blood secretory system, then that leads to a swelling of the lymph affected site. Mode of transmission, how is it spread from one person to another? We are saying it is transmitted into the body by a mosquito bite from Culex mosquito. Generally, the Culex mosquito is the one that can uh, spread the, the, the filarial worm from one person to another. And generally, Culex mosquito is a, a male mosquito. The Anopheles mosquito, mind you, carries the uh, uh, the protozoa, the plasmodium. That one is a female mosquito. Symptoms of elephantiasis. There is massive swelling on legs and arms. Most of the times, the legs and the arms be, uh, swell. One arm might be very big or one leg might be very big and sometimes both legs can be affected. So in some cases, swellings occur on the scrotum and bliss. So one, one of the times you find that one woman has a very big bliss than a uh, normal one. Sometimes it occurs the testis, that's where the scrotum, the scrotum protects the testis. So once the scrotum is affected by the uh, worm, generally there is a swelling of the test, testis. Control and prevention, how is it prevented? How is elephantiasis prevented? Mosquito control, eliminating the Culex mosquitoes, one. Uh, treatment using appropriate drugs. So most of the uh, treatments should be prescribed by the doctor or medical personnel. We have two liver blindness, liver blindness. Cause, it is caused by roundworms, Oncoseca vovulus. 
So the, this worm is scientifically known as Onkoseka vulvulus. So this one, Onkoseka vulvulus, is one of the uh, uh, the worms that is affecting the uh, uh, people that is causing liver blindness. Effects and areas. It is the world's second leading infectious cause of blindness, so it can also affect the eyes. It is also called robust disease. So areas that are affected are looking at the sight, eyes, sense organs for sight. Mode of transmission, how is it spread? The parasite is transmitted to humans through bite of black fly of the uh, simulium type. So there are certain flies black, which are black in color. Those ones are able to transmit the uh, wave. What are the symptoms of the river disease? One, severe itching in the eye. The eyes, a person uh, scratches each, each, the eyes itches each and every time. The eyes itch each and every time. Control and spread, meaning to say when you talk of itching, the person try to scratch the uh, eyes like that, like that, that's itching. So now control and treatment, how can we can treat this one? Observe personal hygiene. So most of the times you must clean, make sure that your eyes are clean. Food treatment, the food must be well treated by cooking. Make sure that the food is well cooked and that most of the times can be treated if possible. Treatment of water before it is pumped to our homes. Generally, water, if water is drawn from the wells, it must be overboiled. Water must be boiled before taking it from the wells. At the same time, the water must be chlorinated. Most of water or piped water should be chlorinated. Providing health services to the people about river blindness. Proper disposal of human and animal waste. In this one, we have to dig our own toilets. Make sure that each and every household is having a toilet which they are using to make sure that the worm should not spread uh, from one person to another. At times, most of the times, those people who do not have toilets, they dispose their feces anywhere. That one is very, very dangerous. So we have cancer. Cancer is one of the uh, diseases that uh, brings a lot of attention by the medical practitioners. And cancer in today, we are living in a cancerous era. We are living in the times of cancer these days, which is claiming a lot of lives uh, in people. So cancer has posed a, uh, a enormous problems, as a sea of problems have cropped up because of cancer uh, uh, problems in Africa and in Marawa as a whole. Because we are failing to, to, uh, to have uh, uh, good hospitals uh, uh, now, uh, cancer is claiming a lot of uh, uh, lives. So people seek medical attention outside or abroad Marawa. So let us look at cancer. So we are saying cancer is a disease which is characterized by excessive and controlled growth of abnormal cells, which attack, invade means they attack and destroy other tissues. So generally, cancer starts by uh, cells that are controlled abnormally. Their growth uh, is not controlled. You know, a, a normal cell division is controlled uh, by uh, genes of the cells. So cancer cells can be viewed as altered safe cells that have escaped normal growth regulating mechanism. We mean there that the, 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 the cancer cells have changed themselves and then they have no normal growth regulating mechanism, meaning the, their growth is not generally controlled. So cancer begins in genes. That's why I said the genes are the ones that uh, are changing. So segments of a long coiled molecule known as deoxyribonucleic acid, abbreviated as DNA. So genes govern the body's development and specific characteristics by providing critical instructions 
that trigger the production of proteins within the body. So the deoxyribonucleic acid, which is DNA, is responsible for having, for controlling all of the characteristics of organisms that we exhibit. So the DNA can control uh, the characteristics of organisms. Now, when these genes are changed, uh, uh, the cells, the somatic cells may be uh, cancerous, may develop cancer in the wrong land once the genes are mutated. So in cancer, certain genes fail to perform their jobs correctly. So now, because now the genes are mutated, they are failing to perform their specific functions. So cancer then is a disease in which a single normal body cell undergoes a genetic transformation. Genetic transformation here, we mean mutation. A cell may undergo mutation into a cancer cell. So when a cell undergoes mutation, it may develop into cancer. So those cancer, cancer cells, they multiply abnormally, they proliferate, meaning they increase in what? Number. So that increase in number of cells is not controlled, is not controlled, which becomes dangerous. So this cell and its descendants proliferating across many years. So they proliferate, they increase in number. So they produce the population of cells that is recognized as tumor. So those cells are now called the tumors, we call it the tumor. And tumors produce the symptoms that an individual experiences as cancer. So the, now the tumors, the, once the tumors develop, they will start producing symptoms in an individual as cancer. So here is just how cancer develops. There you have carcinogenic factors cause normal gene to mutate into oncogene. So now, here we have carcinogenic factors. Here we mean those oral factors that cause cancer are called carcinogenic factors. Could be physical factors, could be chemicals, could be dietary. So some carcin uh, dietary uh, carcinogens, these are the things that we consume, we eat as food, and in the long run they cause cancer. So they cause these things, the carcinogenic factors, they cause normal gene to undergo mutation into uh, what we call an oncogene. The gene that, the, the cell that has been mutated, or the genes in the cell that has undergone mutation is called an, an oncogene. So the mutated genes and cells fail to respond to the normal control of multiplication and enlargement. So you know when the cell has divided, they continue dividing. And generally that uh, division uh, of the cells is not controlled. And therefore enlargement also is not controlled. So mass of abnormally arranged cells form a tumor. So these cells that are dividing, they are increasing in number, they form a tumor, a tumor around uh, like a, a mass of cell, a tumor is a mass of cancerous cells. So now these cancerous, uh, uh, these tumors can be benign or malignant. So when we talk of benign, this one is harmless, it's not very dangerous. So benign cancer is very friendly, not very uh, 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 dangerous indeed. So uh, when we talk of uh, sometimes some tumors may be malignant. Malignant, we mean they may be harmful or dangerous. So that's what we, uh, we mean. So malignant there, metastasis occurs and malignant tumor cells spread around the body via lymph and blood vessel. So me metastasis is the ability of the cancer to spread from one uh, organ to another. So for example, when this blister has been affected, it can metastasize, can spread to the other blister there. That's what we mean by that. Then if that happens, then cancer cells implant other tissues. Now it can spread uh, to other tissues. So you know tissues are a group of cells performing a, a particular function. So new malignant tumors also uh, go there. Cancers develop when? When does cancer develop? So uh, cancers develop when safety systems fail. 
So when those safety systems fail, then cancer develops. We have what we call proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogen becomes oncogenes. Proto means before. So tumor suppressor genes stop working. So we have what we call the tumor suppressor genes stop working. When this tumor suppressor stop, uh, 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 fail to, to, to stop the genes, then that one uh, will uh, lead to tumor, uh, cancer. So now we are saying serocyclic clock malfunctions, you know, failure of the serocyclic clock, we know, serocyclic division as it is, uh, the serocyclic involves a number of divisions. So when those divisions are functioning poorly, they have stopped working fun uh, properly, then cancer develops. Serocyclic achieve immortality. So when the cells achieve immortality, immortality we mean the cell does not die. You know, most of the times our cells in our bodies, they have to die and be replaced by new ones. But if they don't die, then those cells may tend to be cancerous. They uh, become cancerous. In most organs and tissues of a mature animal, a balance is usually maintained between cell renewal and death. So we have said the balance of the cells is uh, replaced by renewal and death. So death reduces the cells. Once the cells die, then they must be replaced. So the various types of mature cells in the body have a given lifespan. So meaning they have, give, they have duration where by they will die. Either three months, the red blood cells can stay for three months. Thereafter, the new ones, they die. They are broken in spleen to produce iron, which can be reused uh, for the next formation of red blood cells. So we are saying, as these cells die, new cells are generated. They are produced by the proliferation, that's multiplication and differentiation of various types of stem cells. So stem cells, these are the cells that have differentiated, they perform, uh, they are modified to perform a specific function. So we are saying, under normal circumstances, therefore, the production of new cells is regulated or controlled so that the number of any particular type of cell remains constant, or the number of uh, the same type of the cell remains constant, we mean the cell uh, remains the same. To remain the same means to remain constant. So occasionally, though the cells arise that no longer respond to normal growth control mechanism. So there are new cells that are produced, and these new cells, they don't uh, uh, respond to normal growth control mechanisms. And these cells become cancerous cells. So these cells give rise to clones of cells that can expand to considerable size. Describing describing types of cancer. So let us look at the on uh, description of types of cancer. So we have we have what we call the benign tumors. Benign tumors. So tumor that is not capable of indefinite growth and does not invade the healthy surrounding tissue extensively is benign. So benign is a harmless cancer, and generally this cancer that does not spread from one place to another. Benign tumors are not cancerous cells most of the times. So benign tumors are rarely life-threatening, meaning these cannot be fatal, they cannot kill somebody. That's what it means there. So generally, benign tumors can be removed. These can be removed if it, uh, the cancerous tumors are uh, recognized at the early stage. So they usually do not grow back. So these, once they have been removed, they do not grow back as compared to the malignant tumors. So cells from benign tumors do not invade the tissues that are around them. So generally, these cells are very friendly. Why are we saying they are very friendly? Because they are not even affecting the neighboring cells that are surrounding them. 
Right, so we are saying cells from benign tumors do not spread to other parts of the body. So they only affect a small part of the body, cannot uh, spread to another part. So we have also what we call the malignant tumors. These malignant tumors, a tumor that continues to grow and becomes progressively invasive is called malignant. The term cancer refers specifically to a malignant tumor. So cancer cells are malignant, meaning they are harmful cells. Harmful cells. A tumor where meaning a mass of cells that is forming uh, uh, cancer. In addition to controlled growth, malignant tumors exhibit metastasis. There they show, exhibit meaning, meaning show, they show metastasis. And the metastasis there, we mean uh, it uh, spreading to one uh, part of the body. This process, small clusters of cancerous cell dislodge from a tumor, meaning they break. Eh? So when you are talking of uh, a tumor, it's like a cluster of cells, small cluster of cells, cancerous cells called a, a tumor. So this tumor can break from a, a, a tumor. Dislodge there, I mean, can break from a tumor now, a mass of cells, and then attack the blood or the lymphatic ward vessels and are carried to other tissues where they continue to proliferate. Where they continue to proliferate, we mean they continue to increase and multiply in number. So in this way, a primary tumor at one site can give rise to a secondary tumor at another site. So when once it has attacked, uh, attacked one tissue, it continues to change and uh, develop into another uh, secondary tumor. So malignant tumors are cancerous. Most of these are cancerous by nature. We are saying malignant tumors are generally more serious than benign tumors. They may be life-threatening. So these can really result into death. Malignant tumors uh, often can be removed, but these can also be removed, but sometimes they grow back. You have removed the swelling, but you find that after some days, that swelling resumes again, starts growing again. So uh, the cells from malignant tumors can invade, can attack and damage nearby tissues and organs. So those organs that are very, very close to a uh, malignant tumor, they are also affected and damaged. So I'm saying cells from malignant tumors can spread. The spread of these cells is called me can metastasize, can metastasize to other parts of the body, meaning can spread. So cancer cells spread by breaking away from the original, that's the primary tumor. So the original tumor is called the primary tumor and entering the bloodstream or lymphatic ward system. Once they have broken from the primary tumor, they can enter the bloodstream or lymphatic system. So the cells invade other organs and form new tumors that damage these what organs. You know, uh, blood now transports this cancer to other areas where they are affected. So the spread of cancer is called metastasis. So metastasis as cancer, as far as cancer is concerned, we are looking at when it has affected this breast, it will pass to another breast. That is metastasis, meaning cancer can spread from one tissue to another. So an example of correct cancer is shown below. So we have an example of correct cancer, developing tumors. So these are the tumors. You can see a mass of cells. So we have stage three, this one. This is stage uh, two. This is stage one. And this is stage zero. So at stage one, this, that is the swelling. Stage two, this is the swelling, a tumor. Then this mass of the cells is what we call the tumor, tumors. This, now this is an advanced stage, stage number uh, four. This is the stage. So the diagram illustrates the progression of polyp. 
so uh, to cancer. So what develops there is a polyp. Polyp is just some uh, changed cells, and the cancer's subsequent progression if left untreated. So the treatment of correct soil cancer and an individual's prognosis depends greatly on the stage of the tumor once it is discovered. So all of these are the developing tumors, as we said earlier on. So stage zero represents the polyp stage where colorectal cancer is virtually 100% cured if the polyp is removed. So at stage zero, that's where the polyp can be removed and treated. That's why there is a saying to say, if you go area to the hospital, cancer can be treated. If left untreated, then the polyp can develop into a cancer which will grow and spread throughout the body. Now, for any colorectal cancer in stage one and any stage two, surgery may be all that is needed for successful treatment. So surgery is an operation that can be done to remove cancer. However, if the tumor is in stage three or stage four phase of development, then more aggressive treatments which with chemotherapy and radiation may be necessary. So when cancer is in advanced stage, stage number uh, uh, three and four, for example, let us leave part of the diagram. Uh, anyway, this is fair. So in the, in the stage number three, when we are pointing previously, we can see that uh, they, we have a very big mass of cells there. The methods that are used to treat, we have uh, chemotherapy and the, uh, radiation may be necessary. So chemotherapy is treatment which is used uh, uh, to treat cancer, but using chemicals. A therapy, therapy is just a treatment. Chemo is to do with chemicals. So therefore, chemotherapy is a treatment uh, uh, of cancer by using what? Chemicals. That's Thank you.